G'day, I'm Melissa Shannon, founder of Digital Scrapbooking HQ.com. And in today's video, I'm not only going to show you how to make this layout, but I'm also going to show you the process I used to create my own embellishment. This layout was inspired by the Layout A Day February 2021 challenge, and I'll link to them below. So the first thing we're going to do is start in Photoshop Elements 2021. To create a high resolution scrapbook layout, we just need to click on File, New, and then from the New dialog, select Scrapbooking and then 12 by 12 layout. Then I'm going to open my photos that I want to work with. I ended up choosing just one photo to work with. And um, you can see me adjusting the white balance in Adobe Camera Raw before I open it in Photoshop Elements. And now it's time to drag the photo from the photo bin up onto the page. I do that um, because it allows me to work with a smart object. That means I can resize the photo as many times as I like without losing resolution. You can always simplify it at the end if you want to save hard drive space. And I'm just um, fiddling around, working out where I want to pop it on the page at this point. And now the next thing I want to do is to actually create a new folder for my 2021 scrapbook layouts. Yep, this is the first one I've made this year. And I'm going to save it as a Photoshop document so that I can come back and edit it later. Then the next thing I'm going to do is use my type tool to click and drag and create a big text box. And I'm just going to type in a bit of journaling about this layout. In 2015, I wanted to stay on track with my business. I wanted to make sure I was getting to the tasks that mattered most and have time for myself as well. So I came up with the idea of daily task lists. I found that having a day of the week dedicated to promotions would stop me going down a Facebook ads rabbit hole that I was supposed to do when I was supposed to be editing a video. I would just move through my task list for each day during nap time. Big picture is planning day for my business, content, recording, videos and writing, play day, scrapbooking, piano practice or reading a book, promotions, with social media, ads and emails, niggly Friday was tech, finance and admin, plus any of those niggly tasks I'd never get around to. Years later, I've seen this referred to in as theme days in the business world. Of course, my great grandmother would have been doing this all along with wash on Monday, iron on Tuesday, bake on Wednesday, etc. In 2021, theme days are still helping me keep my work time focused. So I played around with working out where exactly on the page to place in my journaling and played with putting it in two columns. That didn't actually work and I ended up going back to one text box in the end. Now the prompt for the challenge for layout a day was marathon. And the technique challenge was to create your own embellishment. So I headed over to Photoshop Elements Organizer. And as you can see on the right, I looked for all my alphas. And then I just scrolled through and um, looked for some that I liked uh, the style of. And I chose these white vellum um, alpha letters after, of course, I'd spent a little bit of time stacking my alphas. Every time I go in to search for alphas, I like to stack them up so that I just see one image for each kind of alphabet font thing. Then I drag them over into Photoshop Elements and then I drag them up from the photo bin onto my page, noticing I'd forgot the R. <laughs> and then I just drag them up. And you can see as I'm dragging them in, in the layers panel, they're not coming in in order uh, because Photoshop Elements now, whichever layer you hover over when you drop your letter that will be um, the layer above which your letter is placed. So when I dragged the black chalk um, board look um, paper over, that appeared on top 
of my background but behind the letters because I dropped it above the background layer. It's slightly confusing. If you haven't used a newer version of Photoshop Elements, it might throw you, but you'll get used to it in time. So now I'm just playing around with uh, putting the letters together and spacing them out manually. So then I also played around with the positioning of the title, the sizing of the image and all that stuff. You can see why I like to work with smart objects because I've resized all of these items a dozen times by the time I finish this page. I grouped all of the letters together so that I could rotate them and move them as one. And I just played around with positioning that top image. And then I started to play around with um, using the eyedropper to pick up different colors in my photo to color the background. I also tried searching for some rulers to divide up my page. I didn't end up going with that look um, obviously <laughs> if you if you notice the look of the first but uh, it gave me the, a spark to look for a ribbon to use so I did end up searching in my organizer catalog for some black ribbon I just searched black actually and then I just came across a ribbon pretty quickly. Oh, after I got distracted stacking more alphabets. <laughs> if you want to know more about stacking alphabets, I go through that in my Get Organized Supplies class. So, you know, check that out. So getting back on track, I just um, found a black ribbon and pulled that onto my layout again. And I had to play around with the positioning of that and added some shadows. I use the Shadow Like Me shadows from One Little Bird. I've been using them for years, absolutely love them. And I just turned on the captions for those styles just so it's easier to consistently use one shadow height for all of my layout. So here comes the fun part. I used the shape tool and changed it to a three-sided shape to create triangles. And um, I was planning to make different shapes based on the colors in the washi tape. And I just created a few different shapes and and then remember to move that layer up to the top of my layers panel so that I could actually see the shapes. So it's making them different sizes and different colors. And then I just went back and changed the colors in the various layers and I decided to stack them all up and rotate them so that they would look good together. And then once I had them in a little stack, I decided to add a little button on top. So I just searched my library for some buttons that toned in with the colors. And then I resized them all to make them a little smaller. And then I added some distressing to the edge. I just used a um, brush 
in a kind of brownish colour and then painted on each individual layer. So to make sure I was just painting the edges of those triangles, you just have to click on the lock transparent pixels for each layer. And then I ended up grouping and resizing those triangles. And then it was pretty much done. Um, before I finished the layout, I did end up reverting back to that white background and a white button because apparently I love white <laughs> and I just wanted to get some better contrast behind the text. So here's how the layout finished up. I hope you've enjoyed watching this super simple layout come together and I hope you're feeling inspired. Don't forget to click subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to learn more about digital scrapbooking or Photoshop elements, head to digitalscrapbookinghq.com.